Howdy, meeps. We're live at the Cardboard Cafe in London, Ontario, Canada, and we're going to be taking a look at Flick 'em Up, the latest and greatest game coming out from Pretzel Games, which is an imprint of Z-Man. And we're going to be taking a look at unboxing this game. This game has never been opened, and we were one of the few people in uh, North America that has the game because it was sold out at Origins, there were maybe 70 copies airdropped, and I have to design some stuff for it. So anyways, um, we're here with Tyler from Bearded Meeple, and we're here with Josh River, the owner and operator of the lovely Cardboard Cafe where we're here gaming tonight. So we're gonna take a look at this and we're gonna get right into it. Tyler, take it away. I have no fingernails, so I'm just gonna bite it open. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Christmas. So for those of you who don't know, this is a dexterity game set in the wild, wild west from... Howdy, partner. Howdy, partner. From um, Gaetan Beaujeanot and Jean-Yves Montpré um, out of France. The art is by Chris Quilliams, good friend of mine. And we're opening the box, seeing what's in here. So this is literally an heirloom box. When you see the quality of this thing, you'll go, oh my. So it sits in this uh, kind of cardboard thing that we're probably not gonna need much. But here, look at that, slides out. And look inside, we've got the rule book, nice. which is very thick, lots of pictures. And under that is a scenario book, but it's all encased in shrink wrap. So we're gonna take that shrink wrap off. Uh, I get to punch some stuff. Yeah, there we go. Get some more of that off. Yeah. All right, so we've got the rule book. We've got a scenario booklet, which actually shows how we set up all of the scenarios with everything, how it goes, and different rules for different pieces that change over the course of games. So it's like, there's a lot, a lot of scenarios. You'll notice that uh, Flick'em Up is for people who are eight and up. 45 minutes, two to 10 players. That's right, you can play with up to 10 players playing this awesome dexterity game. All Which right. is really good because most games you're looking for people and then you're adding expansion and expansion. Open it up, you're set for 10. Yeah, and there's a ton of scenarios. Josh, why don't you find out how many scenarios there are? Let's see. While we punch some stuff. Punch all the things. Yeah. Uh, how many scenarios do you think there are? There's 10 scenarios there? Yeah. So it comes with 10 scenarios in the box, and uh, Jay and myself will be designing some more scenarios for them, and I believe some other people will be designing as well uh, for the pretzel line uh, of games from Z-Man. This is a new imprint. The idea behind pretzel games is that you can play the games while you're holding a pretzel in your hand. I'm, I'm unsure why um, they decided on pretzels, and not beer, but beer games, I think, would not, have... Not all of us drink, but we do eat. That's true. But do all of us eat pretzels? What if I'm on a low-carb diet? That then you're true. holding the pretzel, that's why you're not eating it. I see, Josh. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, is this near Luke? Are we near Lucan? <laughs> I love the smell of cardboard in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Victory. There is nothing like the smell of a newly opened game. It's yeah, very and you unique. can see how, how thick this cardstock is. So, uh, for those of you in the biz, you'll know that there are different um, sizes of cardstock and this is three mil cardstock um, that's huge so one, one of the viewers wants to know if we're near Lucan Ontario uh, we're about half hour away I believe south of Lucan yeah half hour south of Lucan uh, you said three mil <laughs> uh, it's like a, a 3.25 I, I think yeah I think it's just three <laughs> mil Nice no, this is not like Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons is a, would be classified as a role-playing game. This is a dexterity game, so there's no, um, you know, playing in your head. This is all on the table, and we'll be using all sorts of bits and pieces to represent. It's like uh, pro crawl with guns. Yeah, it's a Wild West theme, exactly. It's um, thanks, Amkutu. It's more of uh, like Crokinole with guns. Thanks, Josh. Another great Canadian designed game, I believe, from 1865, roughly. Yeah, yeah. Crokinole is wonderful. If you're ever in the Woodstock area, uh, that's where the world Crokinole champions take place in, I believe, the summer at some point. I'll have to yeah. find out. My friend's playing it. But so you can see the quality of the pieces. Look, there's a hangman's noose. Nice thick. Oh, can you punch that? That's yeah. really cool. I'll show that in a second. So, for those of you who have ever played a dexterity game, you'll know that it's really just flicking little bits and pieces around on the table. 
If you can open that and get one of the gray shots out, that's great. I'll show you what those are. So these are barrels, but these bad boys here are bullets. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to throw the templates away if you want them. <laughs> if you want to drive down to the cardboard cafe, we'll pick them up for you. Uh, we'll save them for you. But see, so normally you get your guys and you stand them up. And let's see, the cowboys are actually pretty big. They are way bigger than a regular meeple. Yeah. So they are very tall. And they all get these hats. And these hats go either red side up or blue side up. And it, it shows you if you've done an action or not. And the number on it is which pawn you're actually moving. Because we're going to build a thing later that I'll show you that'll show you um, how much health each of your cowboys has. And there's obviously uh, good guys. The, the, this cowboy and the bad cowboys, uh, black hats, white hats, right? Now, the cool thing about this is that when you fire at your opponent, you have to line up your shots from the hip, just like you're sh doing a six shooter. Pow, pow, pew, right? And then you line up the shot and you shoot it and you knock them down with your bullet, right? Now, sh close shots like that are pretty simple, but if you are, say, trying to shoot a long shot across the table, like this, like, oh my god, this is so long. But if I have the Winchester rifle, I get to load it up inside the rifle, the bullet goes in the rifle, and I flick from here. Now, I'm only flicking one-handed, so this might be difficult, but, uh, and I'm not really looking at the Winchester, I'm looking at the screen for Periscope. But if I shoot it from here, you'll see it's, it's almost like a guide, so it'll have a better chance of staying straight when I flick it like that. Oh, I actually did hit it, but because I didn't knock it down, nothing happens to him. So is that's how guns work in real life. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so what do we got going on here, Tyler? Um, I don't know how to set these buildings up because I don't have the instruction booklet, and I'll probably put the Undertaker together with the saloon, and that's just wrong. <laughs> right. So here's how that works. Uh, there are bases, these really thick bases here. Right. And we're going to mount up a bunch of these places <laughs> with their feet, footings in there. Now, if you see that, we've got the general store. And you can go actually inside the buildings uh, by shooting and ending up this is to verify that you can hold the with your bullets here. So if this guy was shooting this bullet and he did this, oh, he, because he hit it, he actually didn't get in the building. But let's say I didn't hit it and I got right here, I'd be in the building. And then I can go look inside that building. And inside the building, there's all these tokens like money and extra life and nothing and dynamite and the Winchester rifle and extra guns. So you can and actually shoot two guns. Pretzels. And the pretzel for the win, right? Uh, but what happens in there is that now, let's say these two guys are back here and they're going to have a showdown. And so they start off kind of side by each and they get closer and closer and closer as shots are missed until they're right next to each other and there's almost no chance of missing and somebody's going to get expelled. When somebody gets expelled from the building, you lie them down and you flick them out of the... Oh, I missed. You flick them out of the thing, out into the streets, like through the, through the saloon doors, and out they go, lying dead in the streets. So, look at all these other cool components. Like, look at this. This is awesome. There's a really nice cacti. There's a flower hat. There's uh, a damsel in distress with a flowered hat. There are all sorts of barrels. There are haystacks. Uh, there is the noose, the hangman's noose. And this thing over here that Tyler is putting together is the kind of console. It'll be where we hide all the life points when people have died. Uh, so each team gets a console and they put their units, the names of their guys, up in the thing and then when they're dead they go away and get put into the RIP section, they're dead with tombstones and they get put back in the box. So anyways, we're going to work on putting this all together, learning all the rules and we'll come back to you guys with a gameplay video in, on Periscope in a little bit. Alright, thanks for sticking around. Say bye Josh. Bye. Bye, Josh.